All right, Instas, can you hear me now? You hear it? All right, good, good, good. Alhamdulillah. So we are up and live, and um, now the now the uh, we have a guest today, who is coming here to us from Singapore, as the Arabs call it, and he is part of an organization called Simply Islam, where they actually they do a lot of Dawa work, okay, and this is their book, and. Um, Muhammad Nasser is his name, so he'll be commenting along with us today as we cover our topic, which is the virtues of the Hijjah. Hey, Adnan, your job is to find us what the um, uh, Hilal sighting committees are saying. Oh, okay. So do you know the websites for that? Yeah, yeah. Like Halal Moon Sight, uh, or not Halal Moon Sighting, but... Moon uh, yeah, moonsighting.com. All the different Crescent Watch, all these... So today's um, the 30th. Today's the 30th. Yeah, well, today's the 30th, then, to, yeah, then yeah, it's absolutely. definitely the first. Yeah, yeah, so, the yeah, so tomorrow is the first of the Hijjah. Yeah. No, because I didn't even know today was the 30th yeah, yeah, until yeah. you said that. So, uh, today's the 30th, alhamdulillah. That means tomorrow is the Hijjah, which means we will, inshallah ta'ala, go over a type of recitation. And remember, this live stream, its purpose is for the just the fundamentals of deen. There's no way to go in, in a live stream in great amount of details, sources. Yesterday, someone was asking for citations. It's not really the way in a live stream, right? So, but our goal in general, my goal, my role with Safina Society is to reach out there and, and learn the fundamentals and go over them over and over and over until people really understand their fundamentals, really understand, you know, the value and the purpose of these, the, uh, have a middle class understanding and a wide middle class of people who, who have a middle level understanding that they understand the value of scholarship they understand where to go for scholarship and they're no longer can be described as ignorant, right? If you have a lot of people who are not ignorant, they only, you only need a couple scholars, all right? You don't need a thousand scholars, but you need a lot of people uh, to be well-versed and to not be jahil. Okay, Adnan, did you try this ba'lawa? Oh my, you are missing out. This ba'lawa from Sister um, Marwa is a problem. Had another one. Give, give Ryan one. He has to have one. It's not... Yeah, he has to have one. And today, remember, remember today's the day of dua. Yawm al-arbi'a bain al-dhuhri wal-asr. It's a big day of dua. Let's start now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma salli salatan kamila. Wa sallim salaman tamman. على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرم وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما Mecca Books is our sponsor they've been our sponsor for a long time okay and they're such uh, a, a good support for Safina Society. And inshallah ta'ala, you should pack up any book that you want to buy from Mecca Books. You put in the coupon code Safina and you will get a nice discount. Okay. Next, we have Professors One to One. All right. If you are living in the Central Jersey area, if you're living in or anywhere near NBIC, which is in North Brunswick. This summer, our youth, they're going to have an intensive SAT course. Beyond intensive. For, it's one month, four times a week, three hours a day. That's 12 hours times four is 48 hours of ta'aleem of the SAT so that they could learn the SAT. And inshallah, if you can... If you're on, if you're in the Jersey area, anywhere near, it's 10 to 1. All right, so you need to be there. Next, patreon.com backslash Safina Society is how you all are part of this program. And we just, uh, mashallah, um, I'm always like giving updates on the studio, right? Right behind me here, 
is a nice fat two ton AC unit. Now two ton does not mean the unit weighs two tons. It means the BTUs needed to cool down this studio is two tons of BTUs, right? The, huh? Well, it's, the AC is not running up and running anyway, but in the future, yeah. And the AC will be pumping right behind me, so like about half hour before we start this stream, we should cool this place down. This place will be so cold, right? Inshallah. So alhamdulillah for that. And uh, we continue to develop. And I really want to make the intention to do this like as a permanent stream, not like a, something we do for a few years and it goes away. It is, there's always halakha for the ummah. That's what it is. And I wanted it to be something consistent. And patreon.com, all these patrons are to be thanked and supported with our du'a. May Allah Ta'ala make their contributions a barakah for them in the dunya and in the akhirah. Now, what are the fada'il of the hijjah There are many fada'il of the hijjah And let's start reading. Okay. I'm going to be reading from just a summary from some of the books that ulama wrote. Not no one specific book. Okay. Okay. The hijjah is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, uh, sorry, the days of the hijjah Also known as Al Ayyam Al Ashr, the ten great days. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by them in the Quran by saying, Walayal and Ashr. Now we know that the hijjah is marked by the daytime. Ramadan is marked by the nighttime. So the virtues of Ramadan are the virtues of the night. And the virtues of the hijjah are the virtues of the day. However, by the way, you can pitch in by speaking into this anytime you want. Feel free. Open mic. But by mentioning Layal and Ashr, many of the scholars said, well, why did Allah mention, why not Al-Ayyam Al-Ashr, right? Wal-Fajr, wal Layal and Ashr, not Ayyam and Ashr. Ten nights, not ten days. Okay, and that is to emphasize that the night too is valuable. In the same way that the day is valuable in Ramadan, but it's the night that's emphasized. Likewise, in Dhul Hijjah, the night is also valuable. It's just the day is more emphasized. Okay, so both Ramadan and Dhul Hijjah, their days are the greatest. However, the emphasis being on the night in Ramadan and the daytime for the first 10 days of the hijjah okay it is also mentioned as ayaman ma'lumat the known days okay qala ta'ala wa yadhku wa yadhkaru ismullahi fi ayamin ma'lumat ala ma razaqahum min bahimat al-an'am now here's a beauty allah says that he will be remembered that the name of allah be remembered in known days the known specified. Ma'loom means like specified. Specified those days. So he's also giving you the motive. Like why would you specifically remember Allah in those days? Like what moves you to remember Allah Ta'ala at that time? What he gave you. And he mentions specifically the large animals that he's given you. Camels and cows. Okay. So that's just an example of the gifts that he's given you. Now, why does he mention that? These are the two most important things of the dunya that people will need. The bare bone of society. The bare bone, the society, what is the, the backbone of society? Isn't it our farmers, right? And in the deserts, it's, it's the nomads, right? They're the ones who supply us our food. So today, nobody today gets so excited about vegetables and gardens, water and meat. Like, we, 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 it's a given. But the backbone of every society is the farmer. Now let's hone in on the farmer. What is the backbone of the farmer? It's the cow. It's got to be the cow. It's not anything else. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he focuses and he says, remember me in these special days, and then he mentions, because of what I gave you of the cow, I gave you cows. And Bahim is also in, includes the, the, animal, uh, the, the, the cows, uh, camels. So for the Bedouins, the camels, and for the farm people, the cow. Cows are so important, it's unbelievable. Yeah, when you think about that it can serve as ox, like they could pull stuff. The milk, the leather, 
and then the meat, okay? And the cow is a massive animal that is all benefit and no harm. Like the harm, a cow doesn't harm anybody. You'll never be, a goat is more harmful than a cow. The cow, it's big, laborious, but it doesn't hurt you. The camel can hurt you. The goat can be really annoying. Goats are really annoying creatures, right? If you chain up a goat to a fence, it will yank and yank and yank until it uproots that fence, right? It's an annoying animal. If it has horns, I, the, the, the males, they will horn you as much as they can. It won't hurt much because they're tiny, but they're an annoying creature. So the, uh, the cow, even its dung is special. Have you ever seen cow dung before? Oh, you haven't? You've seen cow poop. Ryan, you've seen cow dung before? Uh, I think back in the day when we would go on like these little field trips and that, yeah, farm. Cow dung, you wouldn't think it's dung. You'd think it's some kind of slime. Because when you're walking, it doesn't have the shape of excrement that other animals have. It comes out not like diarrhea, but it comes out like something like a goo. And it just sits there like a glop. And you could literally put gloves on and pack it up, right? And it's like gooey. And it's sticky, right? And you could do stuff. The first hockey pucks were made out of cow dunk. They froze it. They took it, because you could shape it, literally. It's extremely good for the soil, right? And by the way, it's not najis either. Anything that, anything that is halal for us to eat is not najis. This is a rule of thumb. If it's halal for us to eat, it is not najis. So, so, so if I'm not going to lie, it sounds like you're saying it's halal for us to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like praising <laughs> cow dung and so, <laughs> too much maybe. But... Everything about the cow is unique, subhanAllah. And it's no wonder the cow was considered sacred because if you have a cow, you're going to live. You're going to live well too. If you have two cows, a male and a female, and they mate, okay, you're king. All right? So that's, and the cow doesn't, you don't have to worry about foxes. Like what eats a cow? You never, you're never going to wake up and see your cow dead. Whereas that's going to happen for your sheep, your, ch your, your, your chickens, and your goats. So there's a vulnerability there that's a headache for you. The camel could run away. But cows, they're, so, they're slow. So they don't run away. Right? No, if a cow is to travel for a day, you catch up with it in like an hour. Right? Cows are slow. So everything about the cow is a good thing. And that's why where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember me, I gave you the hemat al anam Right? The, the, these, these large bodied animals. Okay? All animals in the sharia, there is a sharia element to the division of animals, farm animals, and that division is al-budun, okay, wal ghanam. The budun are cows, camels, ox, anything that's related to the cow or the camel. And then the ghanam is anything that's the small sheep and goat. And what's the difference is that when we do the qurbani, you do one ghanam or you divide up seven budun. I'm going to try to do qurbani this year, right? Mostly, probably chance I can do it. Uh, but, of course, we all know that um, our old friend, right, what's his name? Shockwave, the new X-Man, has um, basically, he either sends us the video of him doing a Qurbani, or he's suspended from attendance for one week, right? If not more. Because um, for coming on with this big name, Shockwave, and then be asking if he's a bit queasy about slaughtering, so now he's got to slaughter. We're going to remove that queasiness from him. But he was game about it. He said he's going to do it, right? And he's in Ghana. He's from Ghana, but he's American, I think. He, he's in Atlanta, and he's from Ghana. So he's going to go slaughter for it, inshallah, and, and send us the video. We're going to put it up here, right? There's no uh, ve vegan, vegetarian sensitivities here. We're going to broadcast the, uh, the Qurbani. Number three, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about it being the best days of the world. He said, Afdal ayam al dunya, the best days of the entire world, okay? which means of the entire year. فَعَنْ جَابِرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam قَالَ فَضْلُ أَيَامِ الدُّنْيَا أَيَامُ الْعَشْرِ the best 
of the days of, of your world here are the ten days. يعني عشر ذي الحجة. قيل ولا مثلهن في سبيل الله. So what about going ten days to fight for the sake of Allah and risking your life? قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا مثلهن مثلهن في سبيل الله. Not even the likeness for the sake of Allah. Okay. Ya Murad, tafaddal uqad ma'al qadeen. And let's get Murad's mic on, is if it's working. Huh? That mic's acting funny. It's acting funny, okay, no problem. Murad has a loud voice anyway. Illa rajulun afara wajahu bit turab. Okay. Meaning, he made a great, great tawbah. If I understand that correctly. Number four. Fihi yom arafa. In these 10 days, there's Yom Arafah. And that itself makes it. And what is Yom Arafah? Of course, it is the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. Okay? Now, if we are not fasting, and we intend the Qurbani, you, make that, you must make that intention. To, not, you don't, not you must, but it is most recommended. It is most recommended to begin your, to make your intention tonight. And when you make that intention, you make it very simply. Do you have 300 bucks or not? If you have 300 bucks, okay, you put that aside for your qurban, it's usually the cost. Is it less? It's usually around 300 bucks, right? Uh, uh, to slaughter, it's probably... No, no, it's going to be less. Depends where you buy it. It's going to be less. 300 with cooking and stuffing it with rice. So the sheep by itself, got to be less, unless... The, the transportation of the sheep is getting passed on to us because the gas prices are so crazy, then it'll be 300 bucks. So and then why don't you look up for us um, what the cost of a sheep these days is. Levon says 400. Levon says 400? I think I remember that. Maybe here. Yeah. SubhanAllah. It's a bit cheaper though. How low Between 150 and 200 maybe? Or, uh, here, yeah, it's very pricey. Too and, much. And here... Yeah. Some of these farmers, they know Muslims do udhiyah, yeah. and qurbani, I've been told. Brothers have told me they'll raise the prices. They know Muslims will come and ask for a sheep. No, there was a guy last year actually um, in Montgomery who was actually really cool about it. Like he was really respectful when we would tell him all these things we had to do. Yeah. And I, it wasn't, it was around like 400 bucks though. 400 bucks, okay. Right, who, what, you wrote to somebody on the chat said, if you despise him, ask Allah to guide him. Look at this. <laughs> Who's he saying that As- to? Islam came on here hot and he says, Is it allowed for us to make dua that someone we hate doesn't become Muslim? Nah, no, no, no. Because I hate my math teacher. He hates it. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's intense. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's an intense high school hatred right there. So, Yom Arafa, we don't get to enjoy that at Hajj, but we do get to fast it and we do get a lot of uh, virtues from that. So, when you make your intention, your climax will be two things. Fasting Yom Arafah and doing your Qurbani after Eid. Salat al-Eid on the 10th of the Hijjah. However, between then, if you make the intention to do the Qurbani, you have a, something that is not a Sunnah Mu'akkada, but Sunnah less than Mu'akkada, which is to fast 1 through 8. And to not clip your nails anymore, nor trim your hair. So you're mimicking... The shath. The shath is slight sloppiness of the hujjah. It's not sloppiness. It's like... Yeah, a shath. A shath al-aghbar means someone who is disheveled. Why do we love this idea of being disheveled in the hujjah? Because when you're a pilgrim for the sake of Allah, it, imagine you're, you're, you're going Lord of the Rings style across the entire universe to go make tawbah. Across the entire world to go make tawbah. Like you're going to be a shath al-aghbar, Right? Ash'ath Akbar means dusty and disheveled. So, Sha'ath is sought in the month of Dil Hijjah. So that if you look polished in the month of Dil Hijjah, it may be in the beginning, but towards the end, it's not the right way to be. You should have a dishevelness because we are here making tawbah, repenting to the king. And you're begging the king. You're begging the king for your needs and your wants. As we said, what is the motivation that Allah says? Li- because he gives us risk. He gives us things that we like. 
and which is the big animals, like the cow, which we said is the backbone of all the benefits of civilization, is the cow. What's the proof of that? Right. In, any, any, in any country, okay, let's ask Murad who wasn't here. In any country, in any, what is the most important thing for that country, that city to survive? Food. 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 Where is the food coming from? Animals. From, from the farms, farms right? Yeah. Even the vegetables that we eat, who's pulling the plows? The cows and the oxes. The, the cows and the oxes, like in the old days, right? Okay, so Allah always goes to the bare bone of humanity. Bare bone of humanity, you have a city. You're not, you don't have a city unless you have a farm. And you don't have a farm unless you have a cow. Because it is not possible for the farmer himself to go around the crops yeah. feeding them. He needs an ox. Till and plow the land by himself, the acres and acres that he has. It's impossible, right? He cannot till and plow that land by himself. So it is fair for us to say, and this is the hikmah of Allah saying, All the ni'mah that we have, is all goes back to the farms. And the farms really go back to the cow. Okay, It's really cow, sun, and rain. If you got these things, then you can build society from there. right? Because once, what we need is we need food in the marketplace. We, we have no business with the farms anymore. The city people. Ahlul Hadar, right? The people of the city, we have no business with the cows, uh, with the farms. But we have to know that that's the origin of civilization. Okay. From the respect of fulfilling our needs. And Allah says that Allah's name be remembered. Why? Because of the nice things that He gave you. So, this is also why, as we said many times, the dua for, for, for khairat is a great motivation for ibadah. Okay. In Yom Arafah, Yom Arafah, Yom al Hajj al Akbar. Yom al Hajj al Akbar, the greatest day of Hajj is Yom Arafah. Okay. It is a day of forgiveness of all sins, and it is the day of, of being announced in the heavens. This person will never enter the fire. Can you imagine that? Someone could be doing ibadah right now. Brother, drink up. Uh, it's. Uh, oh, you have it? Okay. Uh, Someone could be doing living 30, 40 years of their lives and it has already been announced by the Malaika or by Allah to the Malaika, this person will never touch the fire and he doesn't know it. And he still fears the fire and he still acts upon it. Okay? Fear of the fire is ibadah. This is why Imam al nawi when he was asked, can a wali know he's a wali? And he said, yes, by qiyas, that the Sahaba is a greater rank than Wali, and they knew they were Sahaba. Right? All Sahaba, greater than all Awliya. And all the Sahaba knew they were Sahaba. And on top of that, there were 10 explicitly told. Explicit, not like, okay, I'm a Sahabi, so likely. No. Explicitly informed that they are min ahl al Jannah. And they didn't slack in their good deeds after they were informed. And they never slackened. And in fact, Imam al Nawi says, if they know that they're from ahl al Jannah, or their awliya Allah, then they would fear the fire more. Because it is ibadah. It is not so much that it doesn't always have to be a natural fear. Okay? But it's an act of, it's rational fear. Rational fear means we make yourself afraid. Even if you are given security from it, as the Ashram al Bashara were, they make themselves afraid of the haram, so they stay away from it. Okay? So, عِتْقْ مِنَ النَّارِ Freedom from the fire. Right? If all that we had was just the ninth of the Hijjah, which is what we call Yom Arafah, okay? that would be sufficient. Okay? And for us, we fast on this day. You cannot miss this fast. Even if you have Qada, you can still fast this day. And you can fast your Qada afterwards. Okay? Let's say someone has two, three days of Qada. Do them now. So that you fast Yom Arafah with a greater virtue of not owing qada. وَقَدْ تَكَلَّمْنَا عَنْ فَضْلِ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةِ وَهَدْيِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه. Okay. And he's referring to his another section where he spoke about it. يوم, the, the virtues of Yom Arafah which we'll cover eventually. فيه يوم النحر. What is Yom النحر? Zaid. 
This is the greatest day of the year is Al Eid al Kabir, also known as Yom Al Nahr. Okay. Yom Al Nahr. So there's Yom Arafah and Yom Al Nahr. What is Al Nahr? It's the slaughter. But there's Dhabah is this way, Nahr is this way. Why would you do that? Because the animals that have long necks, such as camels, you don't slaughter them like this. You pierce the throat because all of the, uh, the two blood vessels and the oxygen pipe, which is the windpipe, and the throat, they're all bunched up. One stab with a spear will break up all of them. Okay, So you have to understand that slaughtering is the cutting of four things and in the different madhabs they 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 have different requirements you know the hanafi requirement no I can't think of if you look it up it'll t- they'll tell you like three of the four or something like that and the most preferable is all of them so when we cut across like this a goat okay we are cutting the wind you're you're cutting the vein first then you're cutting the windpipe and then you're cutting the throat and then you're cutting the other vein the, the, these two veins jugular veins for the camels these are all bunched up okay and so if you spear it you're going to get all of it you're going to break it all at one shot okay and that's that's what the slaughter is all about so an nahr is because the pref- preferable in hajj is to slaughter the camels in hajj is preferable to slaughter the camels Next is that Al Hafid ibn Hajar says, Walladi Yadharu, Anna, Sababa, Anna Sababa, Fi Imtiazi, Ashri, Dil Hijati, Limakani, Ijtimai, Ummiha, Ummahat, Il Ibadati, Fi, Wahia, Al Salah, Was Siam, Was Sadaka, Wal Hajj, Walaya Tidarika, Fi Gayri. So for the Hujaj, of course, and I have news, by the way, about the Hajj drama. Juicy news too. Uh, what do you have? I have? So, at the time of slaughter, the four arteries. You have to go. Okay, good. We'll catch up in Chicago. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, okay. My pleasure. Thanks for the book. So it says, at the time of slaughter, the following four arteries, or at least three, should be cut, meaning the windpipe, the food pipe, and both the jugular veins. Three of the four. Take, yeah, with taking the name of Allah Taala at the time of the slaughter. Yeah. Okay. At least three should be cut. At least three. In the Hanafite school. Good. Now, Ibn Hajar says, for the Hujaj, there are all pillars of Islam are established in the days of Hajj, in the uh, in the month of Dil Hijjah. Salah, obviously. Psalm, because some, some Hujaj will fast the days of Mina, if they have to, and we will fast here, Yom Arafah and maybe even the eight before that. And then there's sadaqa, which is the slaughtering of the animals and the distribution of their meats. Okay. Salah, siyom, sadaqa, and hajj. Tawaf and sa'i. So everything is happening. All of the five pillars are taking place. Now, who said that the, the deeds of the hijjah okay, are, 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 are preferable and superior and magnified? عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم on the authority of Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him and his father okay. the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام there are no days in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah تعالى than in these days يعني أيام العشر the ten of the الحجة قالوا Ya Rasulullah, walal jihad fi sabilillah. Oh, Master of Allah, not even jihad for the sake of Allah. Qala walal jihad fi sabilillah. Not even jihad fi sabilillah. ISIS, well, they're a fake jihad anyway. Right? Illa rajul kharaja bi nafsihi wa malihi, thumma lam yarja min darika bi shay. Except a man who went out with his wealth and his body, and he came back with nothing. Win or lose in the battle, he lost everything. That's the only person who's better off. 
Is ISIS even in business these days? I haven't heard of them in like years. There's such a fraud movement. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's got to be... Uh, they've got to be... Uh, Good to make Muslims look bad. Yeah, it's a Mossad CIA operation. There's no doubt about that. And right. what's, what's peculiar about them is that they would only be fighting uh, like, you know, other groups. They only fight other, other Muslims. Yeah, they only, they only fight... <laughs> Where's your where's where's your work for Gaza? Where is your work for Gaza? No, they come and pick on a Syrian storefront owner who's smoking, right? And they said this is peddling drugs off with his head, or burn down his shop, or you're not you're a fasik, you're not worthy to be buying and selling in the lands of Islam. What do you, these people are insane? But they have they have hijacked the concept of jihad. Wa an Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar again may Allah be pleased with him and his father he said Kuntu inda Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I was with the messenger of Allah peace be upon him فذكرت له الأعمال I talked about deeds we're talking about good deeds he said ما من أيام العمل فيهن أفضل منها من هذه العشر he said there's no good deed except uh, uh, there's no days of deeds preferable than these days they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, jihad fi sabilillah. Fa'akbarahu. Okay? And the Prophet, they said, they said, Walal jihad. Except if a man goes out with himself and his wealth for jihad, okay? And then he loses both of them. Narrated by Imam Ahmad. Fadalla hadhan al hadithani wa gayrihima wa gayruhuma ala anna kulla amalin salihin. يقع في أيام عشر ذي الحجة حب إلى الله تعالى من نفسه إذا وقع في غيرها. It's preferable. Any deed that you do is better in is greater in the sight of Allah than in and these days than in any other day. If you do the same deeds in another day, this is better. It's more beloved to Allah. وإذا كان العمل فيهن أحب إلى الله فهو أفضل. If it's more beloved to Allah, then it's a greater deed. And the two hadiths also point out that um, the the deeds of people, the good deeds of the hijjah, it is the value of jihad fi sabilillah, or greater than jihad fi sabilillah. It's greater than jihad fi sabilillah, except for that one exception of the one who loses everything. وأن الأعمال الصالحة في غي في عشر ذي الحجة تضاعف من غير استثناء, with no exception. They're multiplied. With no exception. إذا تبين لك يا أخي المسلم فضل العمل في عشر ذي الحجة على غيره من الأيام وأن هذه الموازم نعمة. These seasons are a blessing, and if it becomes clear, then it is upon us to make our intention from now. Remember today. I don't know if you were here, but tomorrow gonna, is going to be the first of the Hijjah yeah. because the Qiyad has reached thirty days. For us, it's reached thirty days. Yeah. I got that news from uh, someone who's overseas now in okay. the Hajj. Yeah. He said, yeah, tomorrow starts. Good. Oh, Sheikh Hamid is over there right now. What happened? Sheikh uh, Hamid, yeah. Sheikh Hamid is doing Hajj, Imam Hamid. And who's that? Circassian Imam up north, way in New Jersey. I never met him before. Very nice. Me uh, and Ryan, when we, when we used to do Kharida, he would let us in his house, basically, to do the lesson in private. Oh, okay. Being in nice. It was very nice. By the way, is, 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 is Murad's mic on? Yeah. Good, good. All right, let's continue. Abu Bakr, speak with you, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said, are there any specific ibadats that we should do during these 10 days? Repeat. Specific ibadats that we should okay. do. Okay, so what do we do in these 10 days? As we said, you make the intention for Qurbani. If you do that, even if you don't do that, it's a sunnah to fast one through eight. Sunnah, it's mu'akkad, like a strong sunnah to fast the ninth. It is a fadila, a virtuous thing to not clip your nails until the morning of Eid. Nor trim your hair, nor clip your hair. Okay. What else? A tawbah an-nasuha, a serious 
التوبة فعلى المسلم أن يستقبل مواسم الطاعات عامة بالتوبة الصادقة A real توبة and you commit okay, to uh, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala What is the turning back of different levels? Some, some people, their tawbah is to not spend so much time on heedlessness and to remember Allah more. Some people's tawbah is to stop committing their sins. Some people's tawbah is to pray, to do their obligations. Okay? So everyone is at a different level of tawbah. Some people's tawbah is to actually be serious about becoming Muslim. Because we, we, we know people that they entered Islam, they dropped off for a little bit, and they came back and they yo-yo around for a little bit before it really settles in their heart tawbah for that type of person is to be serious about being a Muslim and, and to not allow themselves to, to get complacent about it everyone's at a different level of tawbah some people their tawbah involves avoiding kabair such as drugs or zina okay. so everyone's tawbah is at a different level and everyone knows themselves tubu ilallahi jami'an Make tawbah, all of you. Ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, la'allakum tuflihun, so that you may find success. Ikhtinam hadhihi al-ayyam. It's a waste and it's an offense to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that an individual comes into the hijjah, uh, comes into an offering from Allah ta'ala and does not exert energy to take advantage of it. This is an insult. Uh, imagine... When you go, for us who are, have an ethnic background, we go over to the old country. And some of those people are poor. And your aunts and uncles. And then they put a spread on the table that you and your parents know they can't afford. They can't afford this dinner. They cannot afford they, they, they saved up. And they spent a lot of money to put this dinner on the table. Because in a lot of countries, what you offer a guest... It's your honor is on the line here. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot possibly bring a guest in and he leaves hungry or even like with anything to be desired, right? So you have to at this point, uh, uh, you have to eat that food. And you can't have this, this, this people coming in with such a, an offering and you withhold from it. In the same way when Allah Ta'ala makes an offering and he has no analogy to the, the, in this case except the analogies for us. When we see an offering, we have to take from it. It's an offense. Are you saying that? Allah, when Allah makes an offering, it's because you need it. Other people may make an offering because it's an honor for them. Right? It reflects badly on them if they don't make that offering. But when Allah Ta'ala makes, puts an offering for us, we need that. Why do we need that? There's going to be a come time where we're, our iman may be tested later on in life. And the root the, that's going to chain us down is going to be the memories of Allah's generosity to us. We should be embarrassed at that point. Like if I'm generous to somebody all the time, and it comes a time later on where I might be, there might be a chance for you to turn against me, wouldn't you be embarrassed? You'd be embarrassed. Okay? Like, oh, no one's friends with him anymore. But you'd be embarrassed to go that route. Likewise, for us in this world, our hearts are, people are trying to sway our hearts away from Allah. And if we have memories of oh, du'as that I made that Allah was so kind to me, things I never thought I needed, but Allah gave them to me, you'd be embarrassed to go the route of Iblis. Uh, not to point to you, Iblis. The route of Shaitan. And I'm telling you, day in and day out, people get tested all the time. And um, especially youth, kids are now being tested very early on in their loyalty to Islam. But they do not have the years and years of memories to look back on. Like it's, you, you go to a lot of people and what keeps them pinned in down into Islam is the memories of Ramadan as a child. The memories of the time where a tragedy happened yet Allah supported them. Poverty came and Allah took it away. Okay? Sickness came, Allah took it away. You think, oh, there's a lot of things Allah has done for me, right? So I'm not going to go this route of it. I'm embarrassed to go this route of Iblis. Okay. And isn't, isn't there a hadith that says the Prophet ﷺ said, "Love Allah because of the generosity." Because of the generosity yeah. he gave us. So the messenger himself is telling us the human condition is that we are created focused on ourselves. Okay. And so 
the memory of who is it that's or the the the, the logic the internal logic who's benefiting me yeah, yeah. Well, who, who's distracting you from your lord mm -hmm. he's the one who's been generous to you and uh, 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 and anytime that anyone has an anxiety about a fear or a desire the greatest way to remove this anxiety is simply to say to yourself is there anyone who's going to get you what you want except allah so just it calms you down it gives you one singular focus and that singular focus is not whimsical he's the opposite of al-hawa al-hawa is unpredictable you can't predict where the breeze is going to come or go it could go real fast then suddenly stop and come again the hawa nafs is worse the hawa the whims of the the nafs is worse than the wind of the air because the wind of the air is bringing good you just don't know where where and when it's coming but the wind of the nafs, it brings evil. Mm. Okay? The whims, the desires that are the non-constant desires. So what's the difference between nafs and hawa? Nafs is a constant. Habir, Qabil, Sayyidina Adam, they all loved women. Qabil got angry. Anger, lust, food, power is from the nafs. Iblis, Nimrud, Fir'aun, they all loved power. So these are constants in human beings. All the great novels are about the constants. What's Hawa? Hawa is a new desire that nobody's ever seen before and they will not see it again. Today, the desire, um, is all the gender related stuff, right? Purple hair, piercings everywhere, and you're an alternate gender and you, have pronoun you love your pronouns. You're, you go crazy over your pronouns. Of all the things, alcohol. Mashi, right? Nisa, mashi, right? Damair, damair. You fell in love with damair, which how, is like how do you say that? Pronouns. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> like damair, <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, and he, like think back, old school sinner sitting back. Okay, alcohol, we get that. Weed, I get it. Haram, but I get it. Women, from the end, beginning of time to the end of time, men will be fitna by women. But you're obsessed with pronouns. It's the weirdest thing to love. You're willing to, 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 die, on a, to yeah. die on that hill. You're going to go on... <laughs> <laughs> you're willing to die for your pronouns. It's unbelievable. That's called hawa. Hawa nafs. When I look back at the 70s, super tight pants, then it goes out like this. It's disgusting, right? It's not something I would ever wear, right? You know, the styles might bring it back, but... It's not something you would, you would like, wow, what, the, what was going on there, right? What was happening at that time? But at least it's innocent, not you, you could laugh at it. No one's being permanently scarred by wearing those bell bottoms, right? <laughs> but this new stuff uh, is, is really, it's really, and it's really freaky the degree that they're actually doing it because I was walking on College Ave yesterday, okay? Walking on College Ave, and I see a dude face, a dress, dude legs. You know, you know guy legs. legs under the dress. You know guy legs, right? And no hips, straight, like this, and massive breasts. Ooh. And I'm like, and a, a, like, it must be either his hair or a wig or something. Like a guy, a boy, a guy face. No doubt it's a guy face. Guy hips, dude legs, right? So you can even tell he's a guy just by the anatomy yeah, and physiology. Like, exactly. You don't even need to... It's almost like a silly um, thing where you, you, you added stuff that didn't match, right? Like you make an avatar, but it doesn't match. Like, but large breasts. I'm like, so it, it's unbelievable. College Ave is the only place he could probably walk there confidently. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to walk in yeah. another place like that. Man. So that's, that's hawa nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is predictable. In the sense that he has made himself, he has, he has given, sorry, he has given us about himself, what pleases him and what displeases him. You can, it doesn't make a difference if you're, how you look, where you come from, is completely fair. And there are, there, it's predictable for us. It's predictable. He's given his, the correct expression would be that his reward and his punishment is predictable. Okay? If you do this with ikhlas and the action is valid, the only fear we have is, was my ikhlas right? We don't fear if the action is valid. We don't fear that because we know what is a valid action and what is an invalid worship, right? We're not hazy about the validity of worship. 
What we fear is, was I sincere enough? Okay. And our hope is, is in Allah's promises. So that's where ikhtinam is. Take the benefit of this. Don't ever leave it. Right? It's an insult to leave it. And it's not good for you. When Allah puts something out there, don't say, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Alhamdulillah, everything's good. I don't have any dua. I don't have any needs. Create something. All right. Other people have needs. Make dua for them. Your shukr. If you don't have any needs, don't you have the need for gratitude then? Then your ibad is based on gratitude. Shukr for the na'mah of the past. Yes, maybe it could reach a point. Allah has been so generous to me, I cannot, I don't want to ask for it. I have nothing else. Then you busy yourself with shukr. You better busy yourself with dua for the ummah. You may be in this wonderful state. Maybe others aren't. Maybe others haven't tasted the generosity that you tasted. So make dua for those other people. Okay, so that's the importance of, and answers the question of some people say, Yo, I read about hadith about dua, but I don't have any dua. I'm good. Say dua for istiqamah. How do you know that you're going to remain steadfast until you die? Fitna may come to you. There's actually a hadith, isn't it, that the Prophet said what means that Allah is displeased with a servant who doesn't make dua to him. Oh, subhanAllah. So like, even if you, mashallah, everything's in order, everything's set, yani, at least make dua to manifest your servanthood and your, hum- and yeah. your humiliation and your humility. Humility your Lord, and not, you know. steadfastness yeah. and gratitude. Make dua that, that you can fulfill the, your shukr that's needed. Because, man lam mm-hmm. Whoever does not ask Allah, he's angered with him. And that's why you never meet one of the true awliya Allah except you'll see the most, these are the most generous of people. It's because they know that they've tasted Allah's generosity. And Sayyidina Ali knows, and he said, there, he, the, it is said about him that if you ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa they know he's going to give. Right? They know he will accept excuses. He will forgive. If you keep asking, he will eventually say yes. Why? Because this is sunnah Allah. If you keep asking, Allah is that generous. He will, he, there, there's no way that you're going to keep knocking on the door, except one day the door will be open for you. SubhanAllah. Mm. Rabi al adawiyah said, I never knew the door ever closed. That's her experience of, of, of Allah's generosity, is that she never had to persist in a dua. Immediately, Allah gave her. That's because her circumstance was so bad that it almost uh, uh, earned her, or, or she received as a compensation for that, that she didn't have to ask many times. And she was accepting of her circumstance. Like she was extreme, extreme poverty. Extreme bad situation happened to her family. Uh, kidnapped, murdered, things like that happened to her family. And she accepted the qadr of Allah, qada Allah. Because of that state, anything that she ever wanted was given to her right away. That's why she said she didn't... Why do you say the door is closed? Knocking involved means the door is closed. The door is never closed. That's, that's her experience. Whenever you hear one of the awliya say something, Sheikh Saeed Ramadan al-Bulti, and, the, and that thing may not exactly be true all the time, he said, you know that that's his maqam, his state, his hal, I should say. And one of the examples of that is, has, um, uh, the, the line of poetry which says that the knowledge of Allah is sufficient for me having to ask. Qad kafani al-murabbi. Min su'ali wa ikhtiyari. It suffices me, the knowledge of Allah, from my asking and my choosing. Okay. However, people, people write treatises on how wrong that statement is because you're supposed to ask and you're supposed to act in the world. He didn't say he's not acting because the next line is dua. Yeah. Right? Qad kafani wa iftikhari. Uh, what is it? Fadwa'i wa wa iftikhari. Yeah, shahidun li biftikari. Biftikari, yeah. Right? My dua, which is my honor, testifies to my neediness to Allah. So, what the Imam was saying, Imam al Haddad, in this line of poetry, he was saying, it would suffice. It suffices from me believing I'm abandoned. But then he continues to make dua. So, he's doing, fulfilling the sunnah. So when people take a line of poetry and they look at it out of context, right, or they pull it out without telling you what the rest of the things is, that yeah. it's not an the honest... The next line answers you. Yeah, the next line answers you. He's simply saying it's enough. It is enough to a degree that we know that we're not abandoned. Okay? I, meaning, if I didn't make dua and I didn't make a choice, I would still be in good hands. But I will make a dua, which implies making a choice of some sort, right? Because it's ibadah, right? 
and it's pride. He says, iftikhari, the pride of the abd is to call upon his Lord. Okay? And it's also one of the hukuk of the abd. We have the right to, as a hadith says, I created you and you, you ask. And it is upon you that you ask and I give. Because Allah created us, right? So he's out of his generosity, he's saying, I made you, so therefore you ask me. You have the right to ask me. If, if, if Apple made this iPod, and if I have a problem with the iPod, don't I have the right to call Apple? I'm not going to... And if I call Google, they hang up on me, right? I didn't make this, this product. But because they made the product, they have to give you a hotline to call for help, right? So that's the same idea. He created us. Therefore, it's our right to go to him for, for needs. Okay? And that's what ibadah is. He now says... Those who strive for us, you will guaranteed receive some ni'mah of Allah and the greatest of those ni'am is the types of guidance that we get. Subul. So when you go into a path of ibadah, a route of dua, there will be a concept of the sabil that is shown to you. You know, something specific in ibadah that's shown to you that is beneficial to you. So if somebody goes the route of tahajjud, if he continues on, he'll start seeing the, the direct benefits of tahajjud. It won't come to him right away, but after some while, he'll see the direct benefits. If people go in fasting, they see after a while how much clearer their mind is and how much easier the ibadah is while they're fasting. Okay. So the asrar or the virtues, the values, the benefits of fasting will, of that ibadah will mop up. That's the, uh, will, will, will rise up. And that's the meaning of subulana. And we'll show them other things to do. Right? We'll show them the other ibadat to do. And all of this is impossible if we have tahawun with ma'asi. If we take lightly the sins. For performing sins can never be taken lightly. And there is a lot of people who are uh, upon what's called a nafs al lawama. Nafs al lawama is a blameworthy nafs, which means it knows it should be doing this with its head. In my mind, I know I should be here, but my actions are doing this. So I blame my nafs. Why do we have? How do you blame yourself? Because you have aq and you have a nafs. The aq says. Turn the computer off and go to sleep so you can make up, wake up for fetch. Okay? The nef says, no, keep watching the next video. Just watch the next video. Go get some Cheetos. Right? And go get some, uh, some Sprite with that. Or some ginger ale. And then all that sugar now keeps you for another hour. Then you slip and you sleep and you miss fetch besides all the sins that you got watching the computer. Right? So your nefs is one thing. Your aql is saying another thing. So you wake up in the morning blaming yourself, right? Blaming your nafs. What is mutma'inna? Okay. Mutma'inna is when my nafs behaves in line with my aql. My brain is saying, obey Allah Ta'ala, go to sleep, wake up for fajr on time. And you do it. You sleep after fajr like this. Okay. Why? Because you're consistent now. There's no inconsistency between your, your, your ilm and your amal. What you know and what you do. So you're now at peace with yourself. Okay? A lot of crazy reactionary behavior of Muslims, especially Shabab, is rooted in al-lawm. And nafs al is the blaming nafs. So you're blaming yourself, right? But you externalize that too. You come out of your room, you're blaming everyone else too. You're angry. You're blaming everyone else. Yes? What about uh, nafs amara? Nafs amara is worse. It doesn't even blame itself. It will do wrong and have no problem with it. That is the worst. It does the wrong and it's completely out of control. That's a nafs al-amara. al okay. at least is good enough to say, oh, that was wrong. But sometimes people who are upon a nafs al They'll take it out on others. Okay? They'll go out and make our lives miserable, right? And try to find everything haram about you, 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 and me. Why? Because he feels that because he's in a blameworthy state, you should be in a blameworthy state. 
He's blaming himself. I want you to be blaming yourself. I'm feeling guilty about this, so I want everyone else feeling guilty. So you see this on immature people, spiritually immature people. They take it out on others. They take it out exactly how they feel they want you to feel. Okay. In the same way that when Allah is generous to somebody, what does he want to do? He wants everyone else to be generous. That's to feel happy. If Allah makes you pleased with yourself, they're going to go and uh, uh, make you happy. Okay? Allah was generous to me. I'm going to be generous to you. So th- for them, it's, they've, they've, they've taken their own internal state and put it upon others. And sometimes you see that these people, they only change when they change their insides. When they get consistent with themselves and they see Allah's generosity, then they become generous to everybody else. Okay? Anything else on the fada'il of the hijjah? All right. We mentioned everything. Okay? We mentioned the siyam, the qurbani, the shath which is not clipping nails or hair as a fadila. And the greatest of these days that nobody should ever, ever miss is essentially the fast of Yom Arafat. Let's say I'm a weak Muslim. Oh, this is too much. I don't have the money. I'm not fasting eight days. Uh, never, I need to clip my nails. All right. Fast the hijjah uh, uh, Yom Arafat. At least don't miss Arafat. Do not miss the fast of Yom Arafat. And all the masajid usually have dinners. Yeah. So you should go uh, have iftar with the community and go there a little bit early, sit in the masjid, make a lot of dua and ibadah and recitation of Quran. And uh, inshallah, you'll have a beautiful day. The next day is Eid. Now when the next day is Eid, we do, we, you can drink before Eid, but you don't eat before Salat al-Eid. Unlike Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr is a sunnah to eat and drink before Eid al-Fitr. But Eid al-Adha, the sunnah is the opposite. You don't, you can drink, but you do not eat before uh, uh, Salat al-Eid. And you do not slaughter before Salat al-Eid either. The slaughter has to come after Salat al-Eid. Any questions so far yeah. on this topic? Yeah. Uh, is Qurbani fard? Qurbani is not fard, no. If you uh, if you can pay for it, and in the Hanafi madhab, and you don't, you're sinful. Yeah. Okay. In the Maliki madhab, you're not sinful. It, but it is considered a flaw in your deen if you leave off a sunnah muakkada for no reason. It's like a, it's not specifically say sinful, but if you look at the works and what they talk about, someone who for no reason leaves sunnah muakkada. It's like a defect in his deen. Like, why would you leave it? Same thing with witter. Someone who never prays witter. It's yeah. one rakah. You just prayed 17. You can't pray one rakah witter, right? It's a sunnah mu'akkada. Before you sleep, okay? The, the, the shafa is, is nafila. It's the witter that's sunnah mu'akkada. Of course, they usually pray together. Shaf is in any number, two, four, six, eight. And then witter is one. So the witter is what's mu'akkada. Are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah a period of acceptance of dua like Nisim and Shabbat? Yes, the, the, the days and culminating in the 9th, which is Yom Arafah, including the night after Iftar too, which is Laylatul Eid. One of the five nights where dua is accepted. One of the five nights in yeah. which dua is accepted. So this is really a month where we should we should really ask ourselves where we're going with life. And we should bring that to Allah Ta'ala. And, and, and we should have something that we, that, that, we're, that we are aiming for in our deen, in our dunya. And we must remember our family and our community and our ummah. Because it's from selfishness that someone just makes dua for yourself. Yes, you make dua for yourself, right? First. And then others. But you must remember others. For yourself, your deen first before your dunya. Okay, because that's what's you can't enjoy the dunya unless you have strong deen. All right, let's pause here and let us remind ourselves of our sponsors again, and then we'll go into open QA, Pref- preferably about the topic. But if we go outside the topic a little bit, la All right, Patreon.com backslash Safina This is how this uh, 
this live stream is uh, being held together and inshallah will continue to advance. We've made the intention. This halqa for the ummah, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, patreon.com backslash Safina Society. The books that we get, and I recommend you make a library of Islamic books, and you could use Mecca Books with a coupon code Safina. So, meccabooks.com, coupon code S A F I N A. And then, if you are in the Jersey area, SAT class, professors121.com. Also, you could do an SAT course online. So contact professors one to one dot com, and um, and you could essentially learn the for whatever exam that you need to take or whatever subject matter you need help in English, you need English as a second language, you need to learn how to take the SATs or whatever else. Um, professors one to one dot com will help you we are also teaming up i don't have any slides for this ryan but we're teaming up with a organization called ame conscience with a brother named yasin all right uh, this is for somebody who wants to do a qurbani in another country and inshallah in the coming days we're going to advertise and we'll tell you exactly uh how to help by uh sending money for a qurbani overseas all right. Usually they do Al Habasha, Ethiopia, Somalia, different really, really needy countries. All right, let's open up our QA. Abby K, is Dhuhr mandatory after Eid Salah? I'm assuming you mean Jummah. It is mandatory. Okay. In the Shafi'i and Hanbali madhabs, you have the choice to pray Jummah if. The khut- attend the khutbah and pray Jum'ah if Eid falls on a Friday. But in general, Eid and Salat al Dhuhr have nothing to do with each other. Completely unrelated. And in the Hanafi and Maliki madhabs, even if Jum'ah falls on, uh, Eid falls on a Friday, you still owe Salat al Jum'ah. Okay. Should women also not cut their hair and nails? It applies to women too. Okay. NJCUMSA. All right, this is the college. What college is this? New Jersey College University or what? If we were to invite you out for the, for a school event, uh, would you come? Why not? New Jersey City. New Jersey City. That's Jersey City, right? Yeah. Uh, out to Jersey City. Why not? We'll visit Harris. Okay. In Jersey City. Big Egyptian community there. And we'll go... Uh, a lot of Egyptians. A lot of Coptics. And we will go to... Um, there's an amazing pizzeria there. Um, it starts with a T. I can't remember what it's called, but it's an amazing pizzeria in Mufti Jersey City. What's it called? Mufti Ghulam Yassin is there. We'll go Mif- visit Mufti Ghulam. How's he doing, by the way? He's good. He's, good. he's, he's given the rules. He's busy. He's active, mashallah. He's active. It's fun. Yeah. Mashallah. Caitlin says, Dua during the daytime, in the hijjah or tahajjud time. Tahajjud all day and all night of these but of course, tahajjud time is khas. There's nothing that competes with tahajjud. Akhir, because of the hadith of the nuzul. And Imam Malik said, it is the nuzul of Allah's rahmah. And it is the nuzul of his qada and qadr. And it is the nuzul of his amr, sorry. His amr. Al-amr bi ijabat hadith al Right? Malaika. Malaika. It's the nuzul of malaika, said Imam Malik. Malaika come down to fulfill the dua that people are asking. I think I cut my nails once, says Khala White. Do I need to do a kafara? No. There's no kafara for missing a fadila. Yeah, Wizard of Oz. Tafadr al Qadma al Qadin. Is Oz's mic on? Oz, try this balawa. Huh? Is this new or from last No, no. It's so good that it's, it's you, you'll still. You won't. Is it still good? Yeah. You don't have to refrigerate, I guess. <laughs> I ate one, it's fine. All right, let's see who else has any comments. <clears throat> what is the name of the Shama'il book? It's simply called Shama'il Tirmidhi. That's, it should be called Shama'il at tirmidhi But it's, the English is literally Shama'il dash, or Shama'il dash il tirmidhi And you can find it in, um, uh, at meccabooks.com, type in Safina.
Abu Bakr Sheikh makes a good point. Someone who says, no, I'm good. I, I have everything I need. I don't need to make dua. How do you know that you're going to sustain everything you need? Don't you need Allah to sustain all of your needs? Right? So make shukr and ask for Allah to continue the ni'mah. And there's a qasida that says, oh Allah, do not uh, change from us what you've accustomed to of ni'mah. Because that is also a type of punishment in the sense that if you are uh, 70 years old, 60 years old, 50 years old, and, and you've been accustomed to a certain level of blessings in life, to lose that, it could shake you up physically. It physically Exactly. We seek refuge. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min zawal ni'mah. We seek refuge from losing the ni'mah that we have because it could mess you up. Like it really could mess with your head. It could physically mess with your body. You could start feeling yourself that you're maybe uh, um, you're physically unable to keep up with this new level of poverty that you have to work now. You got to go clean homes, things like that. Uh, it could really mess people up, or people look down on you, right? People start looking down on you. <clears throat> Muhammad Azagbi, listen. I'm gaining weight because of your mom's balawa so style. So, subhanAllah. Because I, I, you can't not eat it. Wait, this is homemade? This is homemade. No. Yeah. This, is, this is homemade. It was in a... The Costco box. Yeah. Well, that's what I... See? Thank what? you very much. <laughs> Murad thought it was Costco too. Thank you. Uh, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. When I went down, I thought, Costco's got in the balawa game? Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I was like, Costco did. They crushed it. And it's right? like a, and it's like a huge out. container. Yeah. <laughs> they don't come that big. Exactly. <laughs> but it's so good that it's one of those that y- 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 you have to override your diet. Yeah. All right, I have news to you about Saudi. Mutawif is getting the boot. Yeah. The company is getting the boot, right? They've done, the social media outcry has reached the government of mm. Saudi Arabia. First of all, I thought that Mutawif was government. I thought it was the government yeah. ministry. It's not. No. It's a private company. So all those who are like, oh, out with the private companies. We don't need you anymore. You fool. The same money is going to another private company. Right? So that all of the money that was being divided up with these little local cottage industry hajj tours is all going to Mutawif, a company. Okay? A private company. So that argument means nothing. Number two. Zishan Paracha, Sir Fraz's brother, he's going to Hajj. Okay? He told me what I had paid up for my package earlier on, which got canceled, I then ended up paying more through Matawaf.com and getting less. In other words, what do you mean getting less? I don't have a sheikh to teach me anything. I don't have any group to keep me company. I'm all alone, right? I don't have anyone to encourage me. I don't have guaranteed certain things. Like, here's my hotel. Here's my meals. Here's where I go. This is... I don't have any of that. And I'm paying more. So, as a deal, it's worse. Number two, or number three now, this Mutawif company, the, the online outcry, okay, was so bad that Saudi, inside, they're, they're talking that they're already going to give them the boot. Like, they embarrassed them. They've embarrassed them, okay? And they've already talked, they're already talking about opening it up to other hedge companies within Saudi. So you're still not going to go with your local group. So where, where did we go now? We went now from organizing our hedge through our local groups, which makes sense, to having someone far away become your local group, right? Organize your hedge. The idea that let's cut, cut out the middleman is out. They, they are a middleman. These companies are a middleman. All this time, I thought Mutawif is government, right? It's not government. It's another middleman. So you're just shifting middlemen. If I'm shifting middlemen and I'm not getting any cost difference, then we should ask ourselves, what benefits me? What, do I, what would I benefit more? Going to Hajj with my own shiuch and my own imams? Or, or by myself with some strangers. Okay? And that now is, becomes the question. But Mutawaf has gotten the boot. Right? They, they botched it up so bad that, that from what I heard, 
the Ministry of Hajj is now getting involved. Okay, they're basically like interrupt. A woman got there, and Mutawif told them all the packages were booked. Go home. She gets to Jeddah. She's told to go home. She files a complaint with the Ministry of Hajj, and the Ministry of Hajj intervenes and makes arrangements for her. And a lot, uh, and and so there is there is was one sister from Twitter who apparently somehow she's like on the ground with them and she's seeing all this she's the one who's reporting that they're getting the boot they're getting the boot okay uh we have an announcement tonight is gonna be uh uh look at this tonight is gonna be the mad mum luke's at seven o'clock eastern time and then it's going to be celebrate mercy after that with another day uh, or another event about okay another event about um or uh, the hijjah gonna i'm going to do them all here we'll have our meeting here with yeah. the shiuch at seven i hop on for uh yeah. the madman luke's and we got the food kitchen in yeah, there's food kitchen very classes. Full. Very full house. So you guys set me up here, okay? Yeah. Set up the computer and everything. And if you can hover around every once in a while yeah. to make sure we're good to go. Okay. Mad Mem Luke's for about an hour and a half. And then it's Celebrate Mercy so you can all hop onto that. Okay? You can all hop onto that, inshallah. Huh? It's going to be a sweaty night. It's going to be a sweaty night. I mean, hopefully the... the uh, uh, the air conditioner. Sun cool. he, it's here. You see it? AC's here. It's working? Not, it's not working uh, yet. Tomorrow. Why? What's wrong with it? Well, he, he, he needs me to not be here. Oh, not, this is not Asim's. No, Asim's this is not Asim's. Well, let me ask him because you're going to need it to get here all day. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, but he can't though. He, he needs time tomorrow to do it. Who, Ajmir? No, no. no it's Asim Ajmir said that he has one too. Has he what? He has a portable one. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Temporarily? Yes, yeah, so let's bring that in. Okay. Now, um, Lavon Brown. We are citing the Hilal tonight. Wait a second, Levan. Aren't we already in the 30th of the Hijjah? So how are you citing? Unless you're following a different calendar that puts us on the 29th of the... Of, oh, sorry, of the Qiyadah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Levan, explain this to me, please. Okay. Caitlin... Behind every delay, there's khair. Of course, it is correct. That statement is correct. As long as the Muslim is avoiding sins, everything in their life is khair. You interpret everything as khair as long as you're avoiding sins. <laughs> exactly. Hajaban li amri mu'min in amrahu kullahu khair. Shaykh Murad, were you the one who told me that waiting for the fatah is the fatah in itself? Subhanallah. That's yeah. Imam Ghazali and others said that. Waiting, waiting for the... Yeah, one of our, I think it was she, one of our teachers told us, Sheikh Abdul Wahab Sha'arani, he said, waiting for fatah is a type of fatah or a type of wilaya. Subhanallah. Yeah, it is a type of... Uh, wilaya. That's fatah of spiritual matters. Yeah, that's, for, yeah. For, that's from what I understood. I'll need to double check. Intidhar al faraj ibadah. Yeah. Waiting for the faraj. What is the faraj? The relief which also implies the answer of your du'a. The relief, because if you're attached to something that and you don't have it, that is a type of tightness, constriction, and you need to be released from that. Okay. Can you combine fast? The question is being asked. Um, you can never combine a farad and a sunnah. No, you cannot combine yom arafah with qada. You cannot combine a farad and a sunnah. Okay. Khadija Asif. Oh, that's your that's the answer to your question. Khadija Asif, you cannot combine a fard, qada, and a sunnah, which is Yom Arafah. All right. Sheikh, I have a question. Yes. Can you combine you can combine any sunnahs of like a nafil and a raliba? Say like that you can combine. You can combine multiple nafil. Any any level of nafil or any level of sunnah. any no level of nafila or sunnah can yeah. be combined. Yeah. All right, Ahmed Ali. 
what is a good general word of istighfar for the increase of rizq? Mm. Sayyid al-Istighfar To repeat Sayyid al-Istighfar is a good word Look it up Sayyid al-Istighfar There is a hadith that states I believe That the believer changes state 70 times Okay And another that one will wake up a kafir And sleep a Muslim in the opposite The answer to that is that That's the saying of Hassan al-Basri The believer's state changes 70 times But the munafiq is always on one state for 70 years what that means is that the believer's state is, in, is constantly fluctuating between virtuous states, such as the virtuous state of having awe of Allah, the virtuous state of tawbah, the virtuous state of dua, the virtuous state of contemplation of the meanings of Allah's book, gratitude for blessing, like that. But the munafiq, he's in one state of denial of the truth. And the hadith that you quoted about the most the end of time people will wake up a mu'min and die a kafir means that apostasy and conversion will be happening constantly because it goes both ways not just one way there will be a like a completely new crop of muslims flushing out the old crop and people will be leaving islam and saying things that are so ridiculous just like it's nothing like i i saw the other day someone posted saying, if I went to Jannah and found it filled with white converts, I'd be like, no thanks, I'll walk right out. How do you know that's not the statement that Allah takes seriously? And that was a moment of ijabah. And then you're going to find that word carrying you 70 leagues into the hellfire. SubhanAllah. Uh, Makida, she says, we're also going to do the sighting. So apparently, many people are on the 29th. Yeah, some are. Some people are on the 29th who went by local sighting, right? As opposed to the, the others that are upon the 30th. So let's see what Levon comes up with, what, what Makida. Levon's an MCGP, which means why isn't he hanging out with us at Thicker Nights? Why doesn't he come to the studio? Okay. Um, Muhammad Gurkani, what do you have to say about the Jafari Madhab or Fiqh? No such thing, no Senate. Senate Munqata, sorry to tell you, so you have to become a Hanafi or a Maliki or a Shafi or a Hanbali. Sunni, Sunni in general, too, and Aqid is more important than this. Okay, so we are waiting for Muhammad Sain Gurkani of the Maldives, and he's the only convert to Shiism in Maldivian history, okay, so that nobody calls you a Maldivian anymore, okay, um, that you will enter Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. How could you say something bad about Sayyidah Aisha? If you do not honor Sayyidah Aisha right now, we kick you out of the YouTube channel. So, Muhammad, type in Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. May Allah be pleased with her, okay? Our mother, type it into the comment chat so we can be. Uh, I'll, by the way, I will send you a gift. Actually, no, we don't ship to the Maldives, sorry. <laughs> but everyone here will be very happy and we'll make dua for you. <laughs> Abu Bakr, Omar, Aisha, Radi Allahu Anhum. Okay. So type it into the chat because we need to do da'wah to this brother. Okay. He's always, he's been here for the whole week, right? He's a good listener. Pickley. Hi, I want to ask, what is the best thing to do on the day of Arafah? Ibadah, Quran, Dhikr, and Dua. Ibadah, Quran, Dhikr, and Dua. Omar, is the Dua more powerful in the day or Laylatul Qadr? Day of Arafah or Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr, and then the day of Arafah. Laylatul Qadr of the nights, day of Arafah of the days. Is there any hadith that says only 70,000 people will enter Jannah directly? No, there's a special 70,000 people who never tried to repel the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, will, they are people who enter Jannah directly. Okay? Can I fast Arafah if I still owe oh, Qadha? Yes. Can you do that in Hanafi school? Yeah, you can. You can, uh, as far as I know, you can make multiple intentions. Qadha, Sunnah, and Naf? Qadha, and uh, yeah, there's some, there's, some, there's some discussion on it, but... Okay. Yeah. Here we give the fatwa that they can. 
Shockwave the new X lamb. Also, if lamb is unavailable, can you get a cow? Well, you can get a goat, number one. And if you get a cow, you divide it among seven of your friends. Okay? We might as well get him a camel. The first one, just make it. Yeah, oh, man, get him a camel. Allah, it's going to be rough. So you can, you can slaughter, but if, you're, if it's your first time, you really want to try a cow, that is a hard slaughter to do. So do a goat or a sheep. There shouldn't be any shortages. Eslam wants to come on a world tour of New Jersey. So, Eslam, so, you, you let us know when you're coming. Yes. So yeah, in the Hanafi school, uh, it is valid to make the intention to make up Mr. Ramadan fast and to make a secondary sunnah intention such as fasting the six days of Shawwal, the Sunnah of Mondays and Thursdays. Hanafism? Hanaf in the Hanafi school, it's valid. Mm. Okay. Uh, what's going on at 7 p.m.? 7 p.m., the Mad Memluks. Go to the Mad Memluks YouTube channel. Your live stream? It's, the, it's a live stream. And we are, inshallah ta'ala, we will be, bi ta'ala, uh, on there. And it's always a riot. Being on the Mad Mem, They're as bad as the Sphinx, uh, crazy as Sphinx side of them. Who's, is that, who's May who? God be pleased with Abu Bakr and his daughter I, Aisha radiallahu anhu. Oh, MashaAllah, you're two thirds of the way there. And Sayyidina Umar. Add that in the next chat Radiallah too. Allah. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Thank you very much, Ya Muhammad. And in the sight of Allah Ta'ala, inshaAllah, we have freed you from most of this, or Allah has freed you on this podcast from most of that nonsense of animosity towards the Sahaba. We're still waiting on the last one-third. There's no way to go two-thirds and miss out on Sayyidina Umar. What religion do we have without the Sunnah of Sayyidina Umar? Right? Because many of the ijtihadat necessary came from Sayyidina Umar. And Hamza said, and Sayyidina Uthman too. Khalas, Sayyidina Uthman. Yeah, Hamza, a hey, good call. All right. Uh, Ryan, could you type it out? The Mad Memluks YouTube channel. And they're as wild of a podcast as the Safina Society channel was. Then after that, it's Celebrate Mercy YouTube channel. So it's all on YouTube. Okay. All Eastern time as well. Okay. Is what it, is Salat at Tawbah? It's two rakahs with the intention of Tawbah. That's it. Go ahead, Murat. Is anyone coming here for the Mad Memlooks? Yeah, everyone's going to be here anyway because there is the soup kitchen no, downstairs. No, they're, they're oh, from their side. Yeah, no, from their side. no. Okay, so it'll be just us here. Just us. Okay. Samira says, should we refrain from cutting hair and nails if we give qurbani next 10 days? Yes, as a fadila. You're not obligated. It's a fadila, a light sunnah. All right. Is kafara for Ramadan 60 days? Or feeding 60 poor Muslims. Didn't we read that the feeding is like more preferred? And the feeding is more preferred, that's correct. Feeding is what? Uh, feeding is more preferred. For what? For, for Ramadan, uh, for, for kafara to siyam. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got. How, how, how are we doing on, uh, on Facebook, by the way? I always forget to check the Facebook stream. Us, can you check our Facebook stream? 17 comments on Facebook. We're ignoring these poor people. All right. Uh, Bob Jeng. <coughs> Answer on cutting nair and hails. Yes, we talked about that. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you very much. All right, who else we have here? Muhammad. It is arms down when we pray too. Muhammad, where's my tarahum and taraddi upon Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab? Where is it? And Uthman ibn Affan, rahmatullahi alayhim. And they are Sayyids. Okay, so that we all could have more love for this brother who already came halfway. Okay. And may tarahum upon Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar al Khattab. Az, anything before we wrap up and go to our dua? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Sayyidina Umar al So today, yeah. I heard a really funny story from my Sheikh. Um, he lives in Egypt in Aswan, like very, very close to Mali. 
So we're doing... Um, close to Sudan. Yeah, and we're doing... Not Mali. Close to... Mali is nearby as well, I believe. Egypt? Yes. No, South no, Egypt? You mean Sudan. Sudan should be. Maybe. Because it's but Libya. Yeah. Sudan. Right. So where's Mali? Mali would be to the west, right? Yeah. I don't know. Less I don't know the geography. Okay. But his teacher was from Mali. So we were doing, um, we were okay. learning who should lead Salah okay. in Ashmawiya. And so he mentions that they need to be Muslim. He stresses this point, and then I'm like, what, what's the big deal? Yeah. So he says, back, um, his teacher, um, who studied in Mali, and he's a faqih and everything, he said that when he used to be, like, when he used to live in Mali and he used to have, um, he used to go to a masjid, and at the masjid there was an imam. And, you know, he had moved to Mali in his, like, 20s. And he studied there for 15 years. And he studied there. He became a hafiz. He was a faqih. And eventually he became the imam of the masjid. Yep. 15 years later, he goes and he's just missing. They go to his house and they can't find him. They don't know where he went. And they start asking around. And they, they have no idea. The man just literally drops off the face of the earth. Weird. And so what happens is, is that a couple of weeks or a couple of months later, they get a letter from him in France and he says that I was actually an agent of the French government what? and that I was never Muslim what? and you guys need to and by the way he had studied to the highest level of the Maliki Madhab and the Hafid and so he says that you guys need to repeat your prayers for the last 15 years because what? I was never an Imam I was never a Muslim for any of them he said this happened to his sheikh you yeah. he was a stooge the entire time yes uh, and some other religion. Yeah. And uh, uh, and he had memorized. Yes. And he knew Mutun. Yes, yes. 15 years of studying and serving the Muslim community in Mali. Turns out that he was a kafir the whole time. Honestly, that is more of an accomplishment how you could do that. Yeah. Than it is a shock. Yeah. And a disappointment. Like, how could you actually, like, physically do this? Yeah. I remember in one of our... <laughs> it's just, it's is, such, a, such a strange story. It's bizarre. I remember in one of our darus, I, yeah. I think we were talking about the Maliki Madhab, how we say that the... Maybe it was in Aqidah, actually, where the people, the kuffar who don't... Or who kafirs, they get punished for not believing in Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they also get punished for all the prayers that they miss. Correct. The furwa, the furwa they miss. Maybe, yeah. maybe this guy will just have punishment. <laughs> won't be there. It's going to be <laughs> definite. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah, but when you're dealing with everlasting... But it's, it's invalid. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. all right, like you're going to be in hellfire forever, but it's like... SubhanAllah yeah. Being subhanallah. in Jahannam forever is... What, once you have forever, it's like, what else really... Yeah. Oh, and then another Unreal. story from like just today... Um, then we're talking about like another group, I think it's Makru, um, I forgot the name in Arabic, but of the person who has, like the man who has their genitalia cut off. Correct. Is it Makru? Or? Makru for him to lead the Salah. Yeah. So I asked him, because th this is like a regular question for us now, so I asked him, even the one who does it on purpose. Oh, yeah. And then he's like, what do you mean? What do you, you do it on purpose? <laughs> they yeah. can't process it. He could happening. not process, process it. it. Unbelievable. And I was like, yeah, there's people who do it. He had literally, yeah. like, he almost had a heart attack. Unbelievable. He was like, what do you mean? On There's purpose. not possible. <laughs> who would want to do that? Then I had to explain to him. <laughs> well, he, like, he's almost in tears. He was like, why wow. do you guys live here? I know. What happened? <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. You remind me of one of my, my shiuch. He would like talk about all this stuff happening in the West. And he'd be like... Hatta al Hamir, yani he would say, even the donkeys don't do yeah. this. Like he would, he, he would like praise yeah. the donkeys more than these people. Yeah. Like the donkeys will not even do no. this. That, that's yeah. why we talked about Hawa being so different from Nafs. Whims, it's unexplainable, makes no sense. You, no one would understand how you enjoy it. Yeah. Now, if you went and told your sheikh, there's a man who steals money, womanizes, and takes power. Yeah. He would understand it. Yeah. Right. Because the 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 problems of the nefs you can understand but when the hella goes crazy you just can't understand it it makes no sense to the people outside that bubble yeah I don't know this is so against the fitra and it's anyone so who like tries rewriting history saying They're oh these be people shocked. have always existed no that's no, not true that is ridiculous yeah. it always existed as like uh, even what's his name um, the, the, the one of the one of the authors Oscar Wilde don't yeah. they always say Oscar Wilde was one of these great homosexual writers? Yeah. Why don't you read the last end of his life? He made Toba at the end of his <laughs> life, and he wanted to join the priesthood. The Catholic Church said no. SubhanAllah. Right? The poor, first of all, 
what does it mean said no, right? Yeah. Guy wants to make Toba. They said no. That's crazy. Right? We would have accepted it. If he came we would have accepted him. No we would have accepted it. So it's amazing that some of their big uh, figures actually ended up making Toba at the end of their lives. You know who else has an amazing biography that you would you'd be totally surprised? Now, you might not know about this, but when you walk around and you see townships put up a statue, and a statue, it makes no sense, right? There's a statue that it's just like, it's what they call surrealist okay, art. Surrealism is basically, imagine like, like a, a, bo- blob. a body of a person, but the head of, the, but instead of a head, there's like a water bottle. Like a dream. It's like a bad dream. Yeah. Like a mix. If you eat a lot and you turn the fan on and then you sleep, <laughs> right? <laughs> your body, your mind will kick up random thoughts, right? Yeah. Things that make no sense. Like, for example, a, a full body of a person, a jug of water on his head, an elephant trunk as an arm, and he's standing on a watermelon, right? Yeah, which Willi's, is. Well, he's got a good story of this. So, you understand what surrealism It's stuff that's completely stupid. It's almost like being an eight year old in a silly mood as an adult, right? The king of surrealism, his name is Salvador Dali. Yeah. Salvador Dali, at the end of his life, repented from all of this nonsense no and way. became a Catholic. Really? <laughs> yep. They never talk yeah, they about never that. They never talk about him. Then he spent the rest of his life jo- drawing the Virgin Mary and Jesus and all this. Really? Yep. Subha- the, the, wow. the wildest nut job you will ever see. Crazier than Sigmund Freud. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. More on the edge than Picasso. And he's the one who makes Toba at the end of his life. Of course, we don't consider that Toba to be valid, but it is yes. a Toba that is less than... It's better off... Is, yeah, it's more sensible for us and at least you have a sense of submission to a god we have a, 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 a world that has a beginning end and afterlife and justice right and wrong better off than this surrealism insanity right and he's the one who was obsessed with the rhinoceros horn is what actually moved him believe it or not because he said the rhinoceros horn artistically it's one of the few things in nature that it's an arched it's curved and it goes up like this and it grows like this it doesn't grow out like that. Like a trunk of a elephant grows like this. But the horn of rhinoceros grows like in a spiral. And he's like, this is a feat of creation. This is a great work of art. And if you look at any time that Salvador Dali opens his mouth, he's going to say, horn of rhinoceros. He's Spanish. He has a funny accent, right? And it's comedy. Watching any of his interviews is comedy. But horn of rhinoceros is what made him make Toba and realize there's God. And there's order in the creation. So I like I like the word rhinoceros in Arabic. It's Qarn al Wahid. Qarn al Wahid. The one horn. <laughs> Dul Qarn. <laughs> the one horn. I like that. All right. So let's turn now, inshallah Taala, that we can, um, in the Allah Taala, turn to Allah Taala with pious hearts, and uh, make du'a, and we will recite now Hizb al Nasr. Sorry, uh, it's Wahid al Qarn. I mixed them up. Wahid al Qarn. Still one horn. Yeah, the singled horned. Uh, it pull up in your mind the greatness of Allah Ta'ala in front of whom or before whom we will make this dua and call up to, into your minds what is it that we are bringing to Allah Ta'ala and bringing to Him from our needs, wants, and desires. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, that He accept us, this from us and He bestow upon our heart humility and uh, ta'zim for Him. After reciting this, we'll do three, four minutes of silent dua, and then we'll close out the stream, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna fatahna laka fatham mubina, liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min dhanbika, wa ma taakhar, wa yutimma namatahu alayka, wa yahdiyaka siratam mustaqima. وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا وَكَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا وَجِيهًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ وجهت وجهي لِلَّذِي فَطْرَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصار الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم لهما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه 
يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم أعيذ نفسي بالله تعالى من كل ما يسمع بأذنين ويبصر بعينين ويمشي برجلين ويبطش بيدين ويتكلم بشفتين حصنت نفسي بالله الخالق الأكبر من شر ما أخاف وأحذر من الجن والإنس ويحضرون عز جاره وجل ثناؤه وتقدست أسماؤه ولا إله غيره اللهم إني أجعلك في نحور آدائي وأعوذ بك من شرورهم وتعيلهم ومكرهم ومكائدهم أطفئ نار من أراد بها دعوة من الجن والإنس يا حفظ يا حفيظ يا كافي يا محيط سبحانك يا رب ما أعظم شأنك وعز سلطانك تحصنت بالله وبأسماء الله وبآيات الله وملائكة الله وأنبياء الله ورسل الله والصالحين من عباد الله حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم أحرسني بعينك التي لا تنام واقنفني بكنفك الذي لا يرام وارحمني بقدرتك علي فلا أهلك وأنت تقتي ورجائي يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين اكفني شر كل طارق يطرق بليل أو نهار إلا طارقا يطرق بخير إنك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله أرقي نفسي من كل ما يؤذي ومن كل حاسد الله شفائي بسم الله رقيت اللهم رب الناس أذهب الباس اشفي أنت الشافي وعافي أنت المعافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر السقم ولا ألم يا كافي يا وافي يا حميد يا مجيد ارفعني كل تعب شديد واكفني من الحد والحديد والمرض الشديد والجيش العديد واجعل لي نورا من نورك وعز من عزك ونصرا من نصرك وبهاء من بهائك وطاء من عطائك وحراسة من حراستك وتأييد من تأييدك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام والمواهب العظام أسألك أن تكفينا من شر كل ذي شر إنك أنت الله الخالق الأكبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والحمد لله رب العالمين ظاهرا وباطنا وعلى كل حال يا أرحم الراحمين
محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيبا مباركا في For those who are asking about this uh, time of dua that we make here um, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made dua on Monday between Dhuhr and Asr On Tuesday between Dhuhr and Asr On Wednesday between Dhuhr and Asr And this had to do with the Fatah Which is basically uh, an opening for against the Quraysh in the battle of Ahzab when Quraysh had gathered 10,000 enemies to destroy Medina and kill all the Muslims and they had dug the trench and the Prophet wasallam. there was no way anymore nothing for the Muslims to do except dua so they made dua and the Prophet made dua on Monday and then Tuesday and he was answered on Wednesday and he saw the sign that Allah has answered him on Wednesday so Jabir ibn Abdullah narrates this and said anytime I needed something I would make dua on Wednesday between Dhuhr and Asr. And the unique feature about this is that some signal of istijaba would come to me. If I had sincerity and ikhlas, that some signal of Allah's answer would come to me uh, at this time. That's what's unique about this sa'a. And there's built in Medina now something called Masjid Al-Fatih. If you are ever in Mecca on a Wednesday, or sorry, in Medina on a Wednesday, you go to Masjid Al-Fatih. Between Dhuhr and Asr, and you stay the whole time, you do ribat the entire time from Dhuhr to Asr, or a slice of time, even 30, 40 minutes, maybe you reach that there's a window of time between these two prayers in which all dua is answered. Okay, because once the, this happened for the Prophet, so I said it, it became a sunnah forever, every Wednesday after that. Okay, if you are ever in the so, so, uh, this is a time that. It's applicable to us outside of Medina as well. It's not restricted to Masjid al-Fatih. All right, folks. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa aminu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.